The Black Death, history's deadliest plague, history's most lethal plague. Panic stirred a fervor for scapegoating and anti-Semitic pogroms tailed the advance of the epidemic with the complete annihilation of the Jewish population in some regions. Wars halted and trade slumped. Cropland went to seed. Wages rose with the intensified demand for labor. A plague that killed 50% of the population of Europe opened up chinks of opportunity for real social change. Watch this video to learn how a disease altered the social reality of Europe and reordered its population. Let's begin. The origin. The plague arrived in Europe in October 1347 when 12 ships from the Black Sea docked at the Sicilian port of Messina. People gathered on the docks were met with a horrifying surprise. Most sailors aboard the ships were dead and those still alive were gravely ill and covered in black boils that oozed blood and pus. The Sicilian authorities hastily ordered the fleet of death ships out of the harbor, but it was too late. Over the next five years, the Black Death would kill more than 20 million people in Europe, almost one third of the continent's population. Even before the death ships pulled into port at Messina, many Europeans had heard rumors about a great pestilence that was carving a deadly path across the trade routes of the Near and Far East. Indeed, in the early 1340s, the disease had struck China, India, Persia, Syria, and Egypt. Causes. The plague was primarily an infectious disease caused by a bacillus bacteria that is carried and spread by parasitic fleas on rodents, notably the brown rat. Other parasites, including those living on human skin, may also have spread the disease. There are three types of plague, and all three were likely present in the Black Death pandemic bubonic plague, pneumonic plague, and septicemic plague. Bubonic plague was the most common during the 14th century outbreak, causing severe swelling in the groin and armpits, the lymph nodes, which took on a sickening black color, hence the name Black Death. The other two types of plague, pneumonic or pulmonary, and septicemic are usually fatal in all cases. Symptoms. Europeans were scarcely equipped for the horrible reality of the Black Death. Men and women alike suffered swellings, either on the groin or under the armpits. Blood and pus seeped out of the strained swellings, which were followed by a host of other unpleasant symptoms. Fever, chills, vomiting, diarrhea, terrible aches and pains, and then, in short order, death. The terrible symptoms of the disease were described by writers of the time. One writer, the Welsh poet Luan Gethin, wrote in 1349, it was a death coming into their midst like black smoke, a plague which cuts off the young, a rootless phantom that has no mercy for fair continents. It is of the form of an apple, like the head of an onion, a small boil that spares no one. Great is it seething like a burning cinder, a grievous thing of ashy color. Spread. The Black Death took the Silk Road, Ancient DNA has identified the earliest victims of the Black Plague in Kyrgyzstan in Central Asia. The region of Kyrgyzstan was a stopover on the Silk Road trading route that extended from China to Western Europe. The Black Death was then spread by humans or fleas traveling with humans as they traveled the Silk Road. Both long distance trade and local regional trade were paramount factors in spreading this disease from the Tian Shan region into Western Eurasia and beyond. Did you know, many scholars think that the nursery rhyme, Ring Around the Rosy, was written about the symptoms of the Black Death. Impact, decreased cultivated land. A drastic reduction of the land under cultivation was witnessed as a huge number of laborers fell prey to the plague, with not enough workers to meet needs. Salaries and prices soared. Things went downhill for the landowners. The shortage of labor compelled them to substitute wages or money rents in place of labor services to keep their tenants. There was also a general rise in wages for artisans and peasants. A more flexible, more mobile, and more independent workforce was born. Psychological effects. The psychological effects of the Black Death can be seen reflected in poetry, sculpture, and painting in the form of preoccupation with death in the afterlife. The Roman Catholic Church lost some of its monopoly over the salvation of souls as people turned to mysticism. Anti-Semitism. 
What has anti-Semitism to do with the Black Death? Let's help put things into perspective. Anti-Semitism greatly intensified throughout Europe as Jews were blamed for the spread of the Black Death. A wave of violent pogroms ensued. The entire Jewish communities were killed by mobs or burned at the stake in mass. Economic decline. The whole of Europe was set back economically. Siena's population was so diminished that the project of enlarging the cathedral was abandoned, and the deaths of many great painters such as Ambrosio and Petro Lorenzetti brought the development of the first Siena's school to a premature end. In England, the economic decline reached its nadir in the mid-15th century due to the pandemic recurrence of the plague. Depopulation. According to contemporary archives, Mortality varied in the different regions between one-eighth and two-thirds of the population. About one-third of Europe's population died in the epidemic. The population of England in 1400 was perhaps half of what it had been 100 years earlier. In that country alone, the Black Death certainly caused the depopulation, or total disappearance, of about 1,000 villages. 8,000 villages. Roughly speaking, 25 million people in Europe died from the plague during the Black Death. The population of Western Europe did not again reach its pre-1348 level until the beginning of the 16th century. The consequences of such a large number of deaths were severe, and in many places the social structure of society broke down. Many smaller urban areas hit by the plague were abandoned by the residents who sought safety in the countryside. Social changes. After the major famines in 1358 and 1359, and the occasional resurgence, although less severe, of the plague in 1362 and 1363, and again in 1369, 1374, and 1390, daily life for most people did gradually improve by the end of the 1300s. The general welfare and prosperity of the peasantry also progressed as a decreased population reduced the competition for land and resources. Land-owning aristocrats picked up the unclaimed lands of those who had perished. Women in particular gained some rights to property ownership they had not had before the plague. Laws varied depending on the region, but in some parts of England, for example, those women who had lost husbands were permitted to keep their land for a certain period until they remarried. In other, more generous jurisdictions, if they did remarry, they did not lose their late husband's property as had been the case previously. While none of these social changes can be directly linked to the Black Death itself, it was certainly responsible for accelerating the changes that occurred in society as the Middle Ages came to a close. Treatment. As you are all aware of the scarcity of resources and little to no scientific evolution, physicians relied on crude and unsophisticated techniques, such as bloodletting and boil lancing. These practices were dangerous as well as unsanitary, along with superstitious practices such as burning aromatic herbs and bathing in rose water or vinegar. Meanwhile, the healthy panic-struck people did all they could do to avoid the sick. Doctors refused to see patients, priests refused to administer last rites, and shopkeepers closed their stores. Many people fled the cities for the countryside, but even there they could not escape the disease. It affected cows, sheep, goats, pigs, and chickens, as well as people. Was it God's punishment? Since they did not understand the nature of the disease, Many people believe that the Black Death was a kind of divine punishment, retribution for sins against God such as greed, blasphemy, heresy, fornication, and worldliness. By this logic, the only way to overcome the plague was to win God's forgiveness. Some people believe that the way to do this was to purge their communities of heretics and other troublemakers. So, for example, many thousands of Jews were massacred in 1348 and 1349. You would be astonished to learn that there were processions of flagellants that traveled from town to town and engaged in public displays of penance and punishment. They would beat themselves and one another with heavy leather straps studded with sharp pieces of metal while the townspeople looked on. Honestly speaking, this practice provided some comfort to people who otherwise felt powerless, but the movement soon disintegrated due to papal resistance. Did the Black Death die? 
Historians suggest that the plague never really ended and returned with a vengeance years later. However, officials in the port city of Ragusa were able to slow its spread by keeping arriving sailors in isolation until it was clear that they were not curing the disease, creating social distance that relied on isolation to slow the spread of the disease. That is exactly where the term quarantine took birth. As the sailors were initially held on their ships for 30 days, a Trentino, a period that was later increased to 40 days or a quarantine. Does the Black Plague still exist? Though it kept reappearing after it had run its course in the 1350s, modern sanitation and public health practices have greatly mitigated the impact of the disease, not eliminated. While antibiotics are available to treat the Black Death, according to the World Health Organization, there are still 1,000 to 3,000 cases of plague every year. Which pandemic do you fear the most? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for joining us on this journey of exploration and discovery. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, Time Capsule, for fascinating content. Until next time,